Hello everyone and welcome to your 73rd Coco Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about XC Frameworks which were newly introduced in Xcode 11. Now an XC Framework is a way that you can bundle your code whether it be Swift, C, Objective-C, it could be other frameworks or libraries, it can be assets, all these different things is essentially a way that you can package these all up and share them amongst other applications that you might have. Maybe you're trying to share them with other clients or um, various other places that you might want to share the same code. So if you think of like Foundation or Coco or UIKit, these are all different examples of a framework essentially. And so that's what we're trying to create. An XC framework is just a new uh, format for frameworks going forward. Now, some benefits of XC framework are that you can target various platforms. So whether you want a Mac specific or iOS specific or you know TV watch specific uh, builds, you can essentially package all of these under the same XC framework umbrella and the, you'll only be taking the parts of which apply to the target destination. So that's kind of one nice benefit around it. Um, and there's uh, the alternative to doing this kind of thing is also Swift packages. Now, Swift packages are a different thing where you might want to just share Swift code with the community, but there's obviously limitations with Swift packages where uh, they only work with Swift and at least as far as I know, uh, or at least kind of, and then um, there's also just the fact that uh, you have to keep all of the source open. So if you are trying to share, um, you know, trying to keep some code private, for example, you don't want to share all of that code publicly, an XC framework allows you to essentially compile your code and it will not, you know, expose all of the implementation details to the client. So that's another benefit of XC framework if you're trying to, uh, say, work for a company and hide the inner workings of your code. Now, uh, with that said, that's uh, basically the general idea of an XC framework. And this tutorial, we're just going to be talking about how we can create one and integrate it into an app. So what you see in front of you right now is a simple new Mac OS application. I haven't done anything with it. Um, most of this tutorial is going to be walking through creating a framework. So to do this, we can go File, New, and I'm just going to go New Project. And I'm going to select, select uh, Mac OS up here and select Framework. It doesn't really matter if you select Mac OS and you want to have other targets. You can add those later if you so choose. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add this for now. Uh, so Mac OS Framework. And the framework is going to be called Troll Kit, which I'll explain in a bit. And we can go ahead and hit Next. And I'm just going to save it in my project directory here. All right, so uh, in this nice little troll kit, uh, little uh, project that we have here, uh, we have this one target, which is a framework, a standard framework, and it's just called troll kit, and there's no files associated with it. Now, I already have created a few files that I wanna use here. So uh, I got these and this assets thing here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag these into my project and copy them and there we go. So uh, basically this is gonna be what I'm gonna share via Trollkit. So Trollkit is going to be simply this window controller and the window controller is pretty simple. It's got its image view and a button and the general idea is when I click this button, I'm going to display an image in the window controller. So this framework, uh, as, in, as a framework author, you should generally think about this quite a bit is what are you exposing to the client? So the only real thing that's exposed here is this class. So this troll window controller. And troll window controller can only be exposed, or any, any other code that you have can only be exposed if it is public. Now, if it's not marked as explicitly public, it means it won't be visible to the other modules or other um, you know targets essentially that are trying to use this particular framework. So anytime you're working with a framework explicitly, you have to remember that you need to publicly expose anything that you want to be visible for the client. So here, in this case, we're publicly exposing this troll window controller, and anything that's not marked as public will be intrinsically internal, so this image view property will not be visible publicly. Then we have this public initializer, which we need to allow uh, you know, the client to actually initialize 
a troll window controller. And then also this action will not be uh, explicitly uh, visible as well because we're not marking it as public. So uh, some other little things to note is that if you're accessing resources in a framework, the framework bundle is associated with the executable that it's brought into. So you can't just use uh, NS image named, for example, you have to explicitly find the bundle that represents this framework and then pull out the image uh, within that using sort of this uh, dance here, for example. So certain things to be careful of when you're dealing with frameworks is that you're not you're not in the bundle uh, sort of, you know, as you might standardly think of it, right? You don't have the main bundle that is associated with yourself. So the, the, the framework is going to be brought into a different target, and then that would become the main bundle in that case. So anyway, at the end of the day, we are publicly exposing this window controller, and then we're publicly exposing the initializer, and that's it. So this will still expose everything that's on NS window controller, which will allow us to still call show window, for example, and uh, that'll be that. So perfect. So now what do we want to do? Well, now we want to actually uh, create this framework. Now there's a few steps we want to do before we do this. We have to go ahead and select on our project here. We're going to go ahead to build settings. And one of the build settings we're going to look for is build libraries. And I spelled that wrong. So build libraries for distribution. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to change our troll kit target to be yes. So we are intending to build this library for distribution. And uh, if I look at my little help thing over here, it's basically going to uh, support library evolution. And what this actually means is that it's going to create this interface file that will uh, not be basically compiled into a particular compiler version. It's more of a, a textual interface in which you could you know, make a compiler change under the hood, but the, the client of this framework would still understand uh, the code and could, could still call it the same way. So it doesn't mean you're, you're stuck to a particular Swift compiler version. The other thing that we have to do is go to skip install. And we actually don't want this to be yes, we want this to be no, because we're going to be archiving this and we want this to actually create a framework for us. Okay, so now with all that done, what we want to do is go up to product and archive, and we will archive a troll kit. And I've already done this a million times already. Um, but what we want to do from here is just leave this and we're going to go into show finder. And here we have our troll kit archive. And let me just delete all these other ones so that you're not looking at those. Okay, so we have this troll kit archive. And if we actually go into the package contents of this, we can see uh, a bunch of different things that is contained within and there's the, the framework, right? So what we actually want to do is we want to bundle this dot framework. So this is a particular version of the framework, right? It's like the Mac specific version, but you can imagine a case where we might have other versions of the framework and we might want to incorporate that into the XC framework bundle. So uh, what we want to do is now go into terminal. Since there is no a nice Xcode interface for this kind of thing. So what we want to do is I'm actually going to go into my folder here. So uh, development and I'm trying to actually remember where I had this folder. Um, but I can find it pretty easily. So let me just go CD into this folder. Okay, so uh, what I want to do here is call into Xcode build. And there is a create XC framework call. And we simply want to target a particular framework. So the framework that we want to tar target is this one that I showed you back here when we uh, you know, went to the, we're inside of our uh, XC archive, and so we want the path to this troll kit framework. And so, oops, I didn't mean to click that, but all I want to do is drag this path out to here. So now we know that this is the path to the framework, and then we have to specify the output. So the output is going to be uh, simply, we're going to call it troll kit dot framework, like so. 
And now it tells us that we success successfully wrote this out to this particular path. And if I go back to Finder, I should see that it is in this folder. So let me just make this flat here. We can see now I have trollkit.exe framework. And we can see inside of it, there is the Mac OS variant of our trollkit framework, and it's all there. So very nice. So now if we want to incorporate this, it's pretty simple. We simply go back to our, not here, but we want to go back to our application that we had. We can go to the, uh, the project section up here. Under our target, we'll hit general, and we can simply drag in our trollkit uh, XE framework. So I'll drag in trollkit XE framework into our frameworks and embedded content section. And now we have trollkit.exe framework as part of our target. And with all that, now we can finally do the fun part where we import trollkit. So here's trollkit. Um, do a lazy var for trollkit. Uh, let me just troll window controller. And we'll create a troll window controller. All right, and last but not least, we simply want to show the window. Now that we've done all that, let's go ahead and run our application to build all of our things here. And so when this completes, it will eventually run. And here you can see we have our standard window that came with the default Mac, um, uh, the default Mac app that we created here, but we also showed our troll window. So this is the troll kit. Uh, this is part of the troll window controller that was from our uh, troll kit framework. And if I hit the button, we've got our troll. So that is how you can create an XE framework for your, um, you know, whatever target application you would like to use it in. And so it's a nice way to package up reusable code into a single framework that you can use across all of Apple's platforms. One small note that I wanna make is that if you want to make other frameworks or other variants, uh, you can simply uh, create those frameworks so you can export the other frameworks. So here we, uh, in, in this particular archive, we exported the Mac variant, but you could also export an iOS variant, for example. And you would simply extend this by saying, again, dash framework, and then you also pass in the path of that framework, which is the iOS variant of the framework. And then it would still, with this output, generate the XE framework that encompasses them all. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was beneficial for you, and hopefully you have the idea of how an XE framework might be useful in your workflows. If you have any questions, leave your questions in the comments section below. Please subscribe and hit the bell, and I will see you guys in an upcoming tutorial. See you then.